and and we are live. Okay, right. Welcome back, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Koshet. Thank you for waiting for half an hour uh, for our session here just now. Thank you. Yeah, so today's session is with the with Singapore Shipping Association on the risk of personnel transfer during bunker survey. So obviously, we will be exploring what are the risks um, or the hazards that um, the people actually, bunker surveyors actually face when, when they have to do uh, bunker surveys, as well as the process or rather the responsibilities and the jobs that ensue in bunker survey. But before I begin, I would like to have uh, invite Dr. Koshet to uh, share a bit more about Singapore Shipping Association, SSA, as well as what he does on a daily basis uh, with the organization. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, uh, about SSA, Singapore Ship Owner Association, uh, it actually is the association formed uh, to sort of uh, look after the interest of the shipping company and, and uh, companies. Uh, so all the interest uh, actually in many different areas, of course, it could be the regulatory thing, it could be some practices in the shipping. Uh, so it is very broad and they have different kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, section to look after a different interest. It could be cruise and safety is one, uh, bunkering is one of them, digitalization another one, it goes on issue another one, regulatory thing another one. So today I'm going to talk about, uh, as your title suggests, uh, that uh, risk and safety of the bunker surveyor. So the first of all, uh, wh why a bunker surveyor is engaged and the terminology bunker, if it's not very uh, familiar term for some of your audience, it simply means uh, the ship needs uh, fuel uh, just like your car needs petrol. And so uh, you fill up your tank, a car tank in a petrol kiosk, and then a ship fills up their tank when they come to port or in Anchorage. Uh, it's just like aviation also, bunkering is a very common term they use. Bunkering means lifting uh, fuel oil for their consumption. Yeah, so, and, and, and for Singapore, it is one of the largest bunker yes. Uh, yes, sentence, right? not only know. one of the largest is the busiest uh, uh, or the largest bunkering hub in the world. Right. But busiest wise, we are second busiest now, as you heard a lot of connectivity and all those things, transshipment from uh, Sri Ram and all. Mm -hmm. uh, bunkering wise, Singapore is the leading and the biggest bunkering hub in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is, uh, I wouldn't say how much uh, the, you know, the is involved, it is around, it used to be around 30, 35 billion dollar kind of, uh, you know, uh, is there in that bunker industry. So uh, point is that when you talk about this, why I bring up this 30 billion or things like that, even each and every lifting of a ship's bunkering, it could uh, touch on uh, very close to nowadays, maybe a million or $2 million sometime. Every time, so you're lifting some bunker fuel that cost around, it, it depends on the cost of the sort of per metric ton of fuel. Now it's a bit uh, slack, a bit low, but it could reach up to $1 million, $2 million per lifting. And when you deal with those kind of assets, naturally whoever buying it, so they would like to uh, safeguard their sort of, uh, interest uh, in terms of they get uh, every drop of fuel, they, they are buying it, right? So that is why they engage the surveyor. So in the buying and selling uh, con contract, uh, you will see that a buyer would uh, always write in the contractual agreement, there would be a surveyor on board. So just to highlight, surveyor actually is not a mandatory thing. That means you have to have surveyor. But in the contractual agreement, it says it, you got to have a surveyor, buyer dictates. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, surveyor is engaged by the buyer most of the time, I would say. Mm -hmm. Then this is what it is. So surveyor goes as a sort of third party, mm -hmm. as third party, but mostly they will safeguard the, you know, that uh, the paymaster's interest. That means whoever engaged the buyer. 
And in that, doing, doing the survey, they have to interact with the seller side. That means whoever is supplying, so they have to get involved that what they are getting from the other side, whether it is the proper amount and proper quality. So two things, one is the quantity, other one is the quality. So now, because the title is the safety of that surveyor going on board, so why uh, this one was there, one safety issue was there all along, that is how they get onto the ship. If the mm -hmm. ship alongside, when the loading, as you heard the loading and unloading going on, at the same time on the other side of the ship, uh, there could be a bunker barge or bunker tanker who would be supplying bunker to the ship during loading and unloading operation. But it's a possibility and it happens uh, that bunkers are supplied in the anchorage. So in that case, when it is ashore, that means loading unloading going on, getting onto the board is quite straightforward. Go up the gangway, go to the ship. But when you are anchorage, that means uh, they have to, uh, it, it could be anchorage could be very far. They have to take a launch service and then they have to get to the ship uh, by gangway or by a pilot ladder, you know, a ladder kind of wooden planks and then you climb. And so uh, that part is a bit risky, you know, when especially a high board, high uh, sort of air draft, it means a uh, ship is light. That means they have to climb uh, quite a long sort of uh, that uh, vertical height. Right, because when a ship has no containers, let's say, or cargo, they, they will float uh, higher up. So that's why uh, more exposed, yes, you have to yes. climb higher. Yes. Wow, yes. And, and what's the average height as in? It could be... A, what could be highest? It could be 10 meters. 10 meters? It could be 20, yes, depending on VLCC, could be 20 meters, yes. Wow, okay. So it is a, it's a very uh, uh, sort of, the height is pretty uh, high, you know? So... It, not only that the bunker surveyor, even sometimes the pilot also goes to the ship by the pilot ladder. The name pilot ladder came from there, right? So this is one thing. Until now, it was the, the safety issue was uh, because of this. And on the other sides, they also have to go to the bunker barge. Once they get to the, get to the ship, from there, they have to go to the bunker barge to check their bunker, sort of bunker tankers, uh, uh, that sounding or whatever it is and uh, the mass flow meter also they have in the bunker tanker. So they have to go down the bunker barge and they have to come up again. So again, how they go by gangway or sometime, uh, it's, it's not gangway, it depends again, they may be, ship may be fully loaded. In that case, gangway uh, is not lowered because it is too shallow sort of difference. So in that case, they'll put some funny ladders here and there to uh, go up and down. So that means it's not just one trip and go and one trip back, it's actually multiple trips, right? Yeah, because multiple trips, check. yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. And uh, so until now, it, it was a safety issue uh, with regard to boarding the ship for that. But now, what has become sort of a dominant now is not only that safety issue, uh, is that because of COVID-19, surveyors uh, are not even allowed to board the ship. Mm -hmm because uh, the ship uh, staffs are there, have legitimate concern uh, whether you know, they will bring in a sort of a virus to the ship. Uh, and uh, it could be, uh, uh, so it's a possibility that they don't allow you to come to the ship. Uh, it's a possibility that uh, maybe barge allow you to go to the barge, but not to the ship. From there, mm -hmm. what you can do. Mm -hmm. Possibility, none of you allow you. So that's what you do now. So that uh, asset uh, value still remains there and the buyers are concerned that if I can't get the surveyor on board, how do I uh, sort of assure myself that I'm getting uh, my right? What I paid for, right? Yes. So this is the problem uh, statement in a way. And then now you mentioned that also you have to know uh, the, the scope of the work surveyor has. So just now I talked about Getting to the ship, getting to the barge is one thing, safety issue. But when a buyer pays the surveyor for surveying the quantity they receive, so how do they go about it? So that means to say surveyor will go to that uh, the ship, the, the one receiving the bunker. So they will uh, sound all the tanks. Uh, what that, does sounding mean in this case? Sound, means, sound for me means uh, something that I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you send me the 
something I'll, I'll sound to you. So not say the here, I'll sound to you, that means I'll tell you. So sounding means basically to find the quantity, okay? Sounding means you, you, you throw some sounding tape. There's a tape, measuring tape, they call sounding tape. Measuring tape, you, there's a sounding pipe for every tank. So you, there's a bob at the bottom. So it will go down by the weight of that and the tape will go down. And then you, when you bring it up, roll it back and you see where is the oil mark. And then there is a sounding table. And from there, you know, okay, if this is like a 3.5 meter oil is there height, then how much volume is there? They have a sounding table. Every ship has that. And uh, every bunker barge also have the sounding table for their bunker tanks. So every tank has this uh, sounding table and then survey would uh, sound uh, the bunkering tank before they, before they, uh, before they, uh, uh, start the bunkering. They want to know what is, uh, what was the bunkering ROV they call remaining on board before they started taking. Then that means after they take, they will sound one more time and see how much they have received. So it is called like a opening and closing sounding. That is for the ship. Uh, at the same time, uh, usual practice used to be uh, to uh, is, is counter check. That means ships, how much ROV they have and after bunkering, how much ROV they have now. And on the bunker tanker, before they start, uh, you know, sort of pumping, what is their opening sounding, how much they had and how much they have after they finished bunkering. So, right. So two way to check. One is receiving side, other one supplying side, you know, before and after the bunkering. Uh, so that's how the whole thing uh, takes place. But in Singapore, uh, actually, uh, bar sounding or bunker bar sounding is not taken after the, the MPA has introduced mass flow meter uh, because of uh, some time in the past there was some dispute uh, in the sounding matters and all this thing, and it was uh, uh, it was a huge project down the line uh, before 2017 mandatory that it should follow, flow through the mass flow meter and then mass flow meter that reading is binding right mm. uh, but nevertheless as because the asset value is so huge uh, that buyer would still take the sounding for the receiving vessel that means uh, my rob before i received and after i received right and so that means in singapore if they were to um, i guess deliver a bunker yeah. then they will have to take definitely the mass flow meter readings as well. Yes. As, I mean, and some, some, some bunker buyers would insist on getting the sounding measurements. Yes. So uh, you see that bunker buyer only can insist bunker tanker sounding open, opening and closing. It's not practice anymore, as I say. Yeah. MPA doesn't recognize that. However, that even in an MPA SS 600 clause is there, if buyer and seller have some contractual agreement, that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. so buyer can insist because they maybe have the muscle because they pay for so much money. They can put in that in addition to mass flow meter, I like to have opening and closing sounding for the bunker tanker also. But right. whether bunker tanker sounding is taken or not, as I said in the contractual agreement, but uh, this is by default, Servia must take the sounding of all the receiving vessels tank before and after bunker, okay? Mm. So this is, a, this is a must. And then the last one is that quality. So that means when bunker is being delivered, there is a, it's called a manifold uh, is a in, on the ship side. There is a joint where this bunker hose from the bunker tank is connected. Mm. And there is a sampling uh, sort of uh, device. And through that a small needle valve, you keep it open, crack open, and then you keep on collecting in a key retainer, uh, drop by drop, uh, so that it represents the whole bunkering operation. It's not part of the operation. So this has to be adjusted time and again, few times to be right so that it represents the whole bunkering operation. Otherwise, it's not going to represent the quality of the whole bunker. 
it right. could be so it's not just one sample but it's several sample at, at several times no one, the delivery. one throughout the bunkering operation it is collected in a big plastic container we call key retainer right uh -huh. and that comes through a needle valve by adjusting a needle valve. So if you see that there's too much coming, this QB retainer will be full, then you adjust again, you know, that's do it. So then after you take the sample, uh, then uh, at the end of the bunkering, this QB retainer will be shaked a few times to make it more homogeneous. And then you will be pouring in uh, five uh, sample bottles. There are distribution list, one for the bunker barge, one for the ship, one for the Marpol, for regulatory thing, in case the ship goes to foreign port, the inspector may challenge, and one is sent for analysis. So these are all distribution lists are there. Mm -hmm. So they are uh, put in the bottle and sealed accordingly, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is what it is basically in a broad term, that is uh, what is existing. Now the question is, the problem statement is, in order to avoid this uh, boarding the ships, uh, by pilot ladder or gangway in Anchorage mm -hmm. shore or going to the barge. This is one. And in order to sort of uh, still accommodate the buyer's requirement to have survey done without physical presence of the surveyor, uh, how we go about it. So this is the, like a remote survey, basically mm -hmm. very broad term. How do you do that? Okay. So uh, I would just like to summarize a little bit. So while we go into detail, what a bunker surveyor does is precisely because um, there are two main reasons that drive this innovation opportunity. The first one is of course, uh, safety, right? We've already acknowledged that they have to climb up very high ladders uh, and, it's, and if it's sunny, it's fine. But if it's in a stormy sea, so where there's, there's wind and then it will be even more dangerous with the ladder yes flying around, right? Yes, yes. So that's definitely one major concern. And the next one is, of course, uh, it's COVID-19 when people are unable to, maybe unable to board ships, uh, but bunker survey still has to be done. So now these are two main drivers uh, while we're looking for another alternative. So what can we do to replace an in-person bunker surveyor having to do all these things himself? And what he has to do, there are mainly two things. One is uh, to make sure that the level of the bunker is as it is. Uh, so that's measuring the quantity. And the second one is to collect samples for quality testing. Am I right? Yes, absolutely, yes. Okay, and we do have one question uh, from our audience here today. Uh, Jason's asking if we can provide any visual representative for the bunker survey operation. Um, well, I, I guess we could go back and see whether there are reference uh, videos and, and all those things that we may be able to share. If we can find them, then we will share them uh, with the rest. Uh, or if Dr. Kochet knows of anywhere, any library that we can go to, to, to have that kind of- I, I think uh, with regard to bunker survey, um, um, we, we can share, even our own, uh, we have something uh, that all this uh, uh, workflow, uh, all this uh, SOP uh, for the survey. Uh, then again, uh, MPA in the, in the past, we have done some work for um, like uh, LNG bunkering and all. Uh, uh, so in, in that also you have that. And SS600 is a very good uh, sort of reference for what the bunker survey is supposed to do and why bunker survey is carried out with regard to quantity and quality. SS600 from MPA is a very good guide. Yes. Right, I guess Jason's asking for something that's a little bit more visual because uh, to be honest, unless you're someone, unless you're the bunker surveyor yourself or someone who, who does this, otherwise you would never have seen how this is being done. So it's really hard to imagine a solution without knowing the actual environment as well. So that's one, but we, we have that answered. So um, there's another question. Uh, so someone, Actually, uh, Mr. Lim Tao got asked that, you know, PUB is planning to do remote reading of water meter at home. Can this be done for bunker flow meter? So I guess that's the challenge that we are putting up today, right? If this can be done by PUB uh, reading the water meter at home, uh, can this be done? We're looking for solutions to do the same 
for, I guess in this case, perhaps a mass flow meter? Yeah, I think uh, that's a very good question. And of course, uh, one of the things I would say, but uh, today's discussion is not to come up with a solution straight away. I mean, I have a solution in my mind, many of the solution, but we are looking for uh, startup uh, companies to really look deeper. Uh, this would address only one part of it. The reason is this. That means uh, by this, uh, by the way, Mr. Talcock was my ex-boss in NOL. Huh? Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, with due regard. But what I'm saying is that um, is uh, that mass flow meter itself. So we are, as I mentioned to you, uh, as a buyer, uh, they, they, they have to accept MPA uh, sort of uh, standing that uh, mass flow meter reading is the binding, right? Uh, in addition to that, any buyer, as I mentioned, a million, $2 million things you're buying. Uh, yes, uh, they understand the legislation, but in case they don't receive what they have uh, asked for, they are not going to, they are going to say a note of protest. Mm -hmm. uh, if mass flow meter was like, uh, you know, that last, uh, I mean, it's the only thing you depend on, there wouldn't be any note of protest. So having said that, what I'm trying to say that till today we receive quite a good number of node of protests despite having mass flow meter. So it's not that a uh, mass flow meter there. And then on top of that, meter reading had been manipulated in the past. Mass flow meter, people tried magnet, uh, one of the things where, and was caught uh, to manipulate because magnet has a sort of influence on the reading. Uh, by putting a magnet for 10 minutes itself, it can uh, you know sort of give reading of uh, maybe 50 tons. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, a surveyor, what they check, even uh, in physical presence, they will check the profile of the mass flow meter in a dynamic way. So uh, it, it's not like uh, just getting a you know, petrol kiosk reading and say, okay, this is what you have got. Uh, if it would be, uh, then uh, even without these two, COVID-19 and safety come in the picture, we could have made the surveyor redundant and that was the thing uh, people thought before when mass flow meter would be uh, implemented, whether there would be a role for surveyor. The answer is yes. And then there are many other things, even the, in the system itself, maybe there's a you know, that lot of valves in the, in the, in the bunker tanker is uh, sealed. They are not supposed to open it, some bypass and all this thing. So if there is no surveyor, that means if one of the seal is uh, open and they siphon back to their own tank, going after the mass flow meter, that uh, how are we going to check that? So it's not just the reading of the mass flow meter, integrity of the those uh, huge number of seals in the valves and, and the pipings, all are checked by the surveyor. So that is the scope of the work too. So we need, as I said, any, anyone, if any buyer would only be satisfied, even any remote survey, it has to, the integrity of that, it has to, the physical survey being conducted by today's surveyor. So it is not enough uh, to say that, okay, I mean, we can live with it. Uh, and, uh, and then let's not uh, think uh, that, uh, though, of course we should do it for Singapore, but when you come up with something like, you know, like a startup company, uh, they should not uh, sell uh, the things only for Singapore, the mass flow meter, right? Uh, other part of the world, there isn't any mass flow meter, maybe one or two cases, but there isn't. And it's not none uh, of the countries in the world, bunkering is uh, legislated like Singapore. Only Singapore is the only country where it's legislated and are bound by the rule, yes. I guess that's why many people flock here yeah. as well. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's well guarded. Okay, but uh, I would like to say that um, uh, the tip on checking out how PUV does remote reading, right, is, is actually quite useful because uh, you may be able to take some lessons from that and incorporate it into the solution. I would say I think that question is actually helping the startups. Uh, one last question from Arif, is the buyer willing to use IoT device to check bunker sounding? I think, Arif, what we're trying to hear from you is if you would like to use IoT devices to replace or to check the bunker sounding, uh, perhaps you should let us know how it can be done. Uh, and if you need more information about how uh, the bunker sounding is being done, we can provide that uh, uh, separately as well. Yes, you are right. Because again, many ships are 
fitted with uh, pneumatic gauges for the bunker tank. So just now I told you that the surveyor will sound the tank physically, but many of them, they have the pneumatic gauge. So you can always say that we can always make it a digital. The point is that there is a lot of error in that pneumatic gauge. It's not so accurate. So again, the question comes how accurate, yeah. whatever you do, the accuracy is, is, a, is a thing. Yes. Yeah, it has to be tested. Um, and one, one more question from Arif is, is the seal, is the piping, can the piping seal be seen from the external side of the ship without having to go in, into the ship? I, uh, I, is this the, the one that uh, you mentioned where, uh, I'm not sure if this is correct, Arif, the connection between the bunker tanker as well as the ship, uh, is that what you meant? Whether or not that pipe can be seen from the external side of the ship without having to go inside? Or maybe we can simplify this question. Dr. Yes. Uh, Hoshet, can you let us know if for the bunker surveyor to do their job, right? Do they have to go into the ship or uh, uh, do, where, where do they stay within the, within the ship to do their job? Is it like inside? No, okay. The only place I know is the engine room, but... No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. so the point is uh, bunker surveyor, uh, uh, predominantly, I would say, stay on the deck. They don't go inside the engine room. I see. Say that they might go engine room. The reason is this. When I say the ROB on board, remaining on board, and they are not going to take ROB of the tanks, designated tank for where they will be taking bunker. They are called nominated tanks, rather, not designated, nominated tanks. So the buyer like to see that even the non-nominated non -nominated tanks are also sounded. That means this tank, I'm not going to take bunker. It's still you sound that. The reason is that there are many reasons for that. One is by chance, maybe some oil has gone to that non-nominated, right? So this is one. Second thing, there could be uh, ill intention uh, of uh, even the receiving side. They're keeping some oil somewhere, you know? So when they engage the survey, it's not only for checking how much you have lifted from that bunker tanker, Usually they like to make use of the surveyor to find how much they had ROB on board and how much they declared in the logbook. So if the declared on and the actual one is the discrepancy, that tells you another story that <laughs> someone keeping some oil somewhere. So uh, with regard to surveyor going on board, that's why I said if had had it been only for the nominated tanks then maybe it would suffice. They would be on the deck itself. Most of the sounding pipes are on deck. But that's because non-nominated tanks are there, some like bilge tank, this tank, all those tanks, they are in the engine room. So they may have to go to the engine room, yes. Okay. With regard to that, whether they have the visibility for the manifold, uh, yes, from the bunker bars, you can see it. Uh, but uh, you see, as I said, if the ship is loading and bunkering going on on the other side, so even from the loading site where the crane comes and load and unload container, you don't have the visibility on the other side. Right. Mm. Okay. Understand. Uh, we do have one last question. I think we, we have time for one last question. Do we have 4G or network coverage where bunker surveys done? I guess the answer is a quick yes if that uh, if, if both the tanker as well as the ship is currently loading, unloading because it's near the port already, right? I mean, you're, you're essentially yes, at the yes, port. Yes, so yes. you would have 4G or network coverage. But what about when you are, when the vessel is uh, in anchorage? Would the 4G network uh, reach? It, 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 it should cover mostly in the inner anchorage. Now question inner anchorage or outer anchorage, you know? So uh, outer anchorage, again, let's not talk about because these are very special case and I think uh, we don't really uh, entertain out anchorage uh, sort of. Uh, yeah. So we talk about the general. Uh, yeah, general. Yeah. Yeah. In my anchorage is eastern in my anchorage. I think it's covered. And other thing, one must again uh, take take into account uh, startup companies that whatever you think of any kind of those kind of device uh, to be uh, uh, be it installed on the ship or on the bunker barge, maybe bunker barge would be better because they are the one supplying. And when you talk about receiving vessel, it's very international. You. Uh, imply a lot of things for the international ships and they are not under Singapore flag even many of them. Yeah. So you yeah. can't really uh, instill that. So even whatever you try to install and it should be intrinsically safe because you know that you know, no spark and all this thing uh, you know, comes out of it. 
uh, this is a must, whatever you, tip, you yeah. think of, including the camera and everything, yes. Right. Well, uh, that's actually the last question we have. Oh, we have one more, but unfortunately, I don't think we can answer it today because we've run out of time. But we will get back to you by email. So sure. not to worry. And so Dr. Koshet, this is also my cue to let you know that I will still trouble you after this session to get some okay. responses for the questions that, are, that have come out. We are unable to answer them. No worry. Okay, but thank you very much, though, uh, for spending time with us today to share more about uh, what a bunker surveyor does and how bunker survey is being conducted yeah. and it's really interesting it's a very interesting uh innovation opportunity out there lots of potential but definitely a challenge uh to to resolve thank you thank you, right. thank, you. thank you very thank much you. and thank you guys for uh dialing in um please join us again next week uh we will have another interesting session uh with another you know uh, with another company um uh, Bernard Shuti uh, on automation of underwater propeller polishing and removal of thick marine growth on tiles and jetty piles. So do be quick to register for uh, the session next week. And that's happening at 4.30. All right. See you next Thanks. week. Thank you. Oh, sorry. There is another one. So um, next week's live session is going to happen at 4.30 uh, with the company that I mentioned earlier on. But we do have a Ask Me Anything session. And this is for the uh, old school response innovation opportunity. So from now until next Wednesday, you have a week, one week to submit your questions about this innovation opportunity. And then we will answer your questions in the Ask Me Anything session. So I will release uh, the answers to your questions uh, on Thursday as well. So do send in the, the questions uh, quickly. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. See you next week. Bye, Dr. Forchette. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all for joining.